everybody. I'm Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet. Today we're going to talk about how to safely store your yarn. And what's interesting about what I've learned is a lot of what I've learned can also apply to your wardrobe, whether you are a crocheter or a knitter or not. If you own even one thing that is made of wool or perhaps cashmere or even a cotton sweater, you're going to want to listen up to what I've learned so far about all the things that can affect your natural fibers. Now, before we can start talking about how to best store your yarn or even your clothes, um, the first thing we need to talk about are what are the enemies that we are protecting our things from? Okay. The first of all, many of you are familiar with moths and Moths are a significant uh, pest when it comes to your fine fibers, your, your alpaca, your uh, mohair, your wool, and even some cotton yarns or you know, whatever natural fibers you have. And the main reason for that is that moths feast on anything made of animal protein. And that also includes your own hair. So if you have um, items, whether it's yarn or even clothing that has been soiled or, um, you know, just worn and it has the oils from having been worn onto the fibers that can attract pest more than anything else. Um, if you have animals in the house, maybe cats or dogs and their hair, you know, gets onto your, let's say, uh, afghan or your throw that you have on your couch or even on your sweater that you've been wearing. And then if you pack that away, that can also be an added attraction to these pests. Okay. And that's not just moths. That's some of the other pests that we're going to talk about as well. So before we get into all the solutions, let's talk about some of the other things that you need to be careful of. Maybe many of you like to store your yarn in some beautiful baskets and then set them down on your carpet in your living room. Um, that's not a good idea. It's probably best to set them either on a table or maybe even into a cubicle for safekeeping when you're not using it. You know, of course, leaving it on the floor for a little bit to, to work is not a problem, but to have it perpetually there and stored there. And I tell you, this is something that I have been guilty of here and I need to start changing my ways. And the main reason for that is that there is something called carpet beetles that can eat through your yarn just as much as a moth. And let's go back to talking about the moths for just a second. The moths, when you see a moth, they are actually not the culprit. They are the problem, but they're not actually the animals or the insects that eat the yarn. It's their larvae left behind when they leave their eggs behind. And that is where the problem begins. So if you see a moth flitting around in your house, it may have just come in through the outside door. Um, and also, let me show you a picture of the moth that I'm talking about. The moth that I'm talking about that eats clothes is very different from the one that you may see outside flying around your lantern at night. They're very tiny and very distinctive, have very feathery, small wings. They are approximately a half an inch or maybe just a little more than a centimeter, uh, one and a half centimeters long. And um, that, that, that is the breed that you're going to be most weary of. Um, now, as far as carpet beetles, they are much, much smaller, very tiny. Um, I would say even an eighth of an inch or smaller, um, very, very round, and they are prolific. They, they can pretty much exist anywhere. And, and also for clarification, this is not because your house is necessarily dirty or anything like this. This is something that just natural, they're just naturally everywhere and they tend to live in the carpet. So, for that reason, you're going to want to take your yarn basket, if, again, if you use these, and store them up away from the carpet, just up above the carpet. Uh, frequent, frequent vacuuming will also help to remove, um, you know, these, these uh, pests. Um, another thing you're going to need to worry with or be careful about are roaches and a, a bug called a silverfish. I'm going to put a picture right here so that you can see what these look like. They're very tiny. And um, one other is the cricket, just little innocent chirpy crickets. 
can also become a pest and and eat through fiber whether that be yarn again or even clothing stored away and the best way to avoid these critters is to not store the things that are precious to you made of these fibers in dark and damp places try to keep them in places where you are comfortable uh, in the rooms of your house that are climate controlled and that will help to alleviate that one other enemy to our fibers to our yarns and even our clothes would be mold and mildew which is often caused by being in again non-climate controlled areas that are either damp and wet or perhaps in an attic where it's you know just hot and um there's not again not climate control another issue with storing things in attics and basements or if you have holes that lead to the outside which is not uncommon in older houses it's easy for other pests such as squirrels rats mice um, and you know other animals to get in and to chew through your storage units i mean through bags and i've even seen them chew into some plastic containers so you do need to take a lot of care with how you store things now these these fibers are also capable of absorbing up to 30 percent of their weight in just the water from the air um, you know humidity and such and when that happens even things such as cotton can be susceptible to uh, mildew mold and dry rot and one little test that you can perform, let's say if someone offers you some yarn and you don't know how it's been stored and you just want to check it out and, and you can just take a piece of it like this and then just gently pull on it. And, you know, this is, of course, been stored in a good way. It's been in my, my home um, where I am comfortable and it, it's fine. There's no sign of dry rot. But if someone gives you some older Fab, older fabric or or yarn material you may want to just give it that little test you don't have to do it in front of them of course but you know just just do that recently i was given a bag it's not this but um some some beautiful yarn and um, i graciously received it but upon receiving it right away i knew there was a problem with it one thing i noticed was the bag had holes already eaten into the bag it was a plastic bag and so the first thing I did was I looked at the yarn. I was already weary. I accepted it graciously, but I did look at some of the yarn and when the first little scan that I picked up already had a couple of places where the yarn had been eaten straight through. So needless to say, that yarn did not even enter my home. I left it on my porch until I could dispose of it properly because I knew that it was a considerable infestation of moss so I, I did not want to introduce that into my home, into my yarn stash. And it not only would have probably disturbed my yarn, but it could have also affected any of my completed uh, wool sweaters that I have in my home. So in order to try to keep your yarn safe, here are some solutions. As I mentioned before about carpet beetles, store your baskets on a shelf when not in use or somewhere that's up above the carpet in your home or the rugs in your home. Another thing you can do is just store your yarn out where you can, you can, you know, see the beautiful colors. A lot of people like to look at the yarn that they have and, and they want to know what's available. And that is also an inspiration for them, which is fine as long as again, your home is pest free. Um, it's actually good to have it stored out where there is light, but not direct sunlight. Direct sunlight can actually fade colors, as you probably well know. This goes for both clothing and yarn. Um, but also the light uh, affects the moths. They don't like to be disturbed. They like their place to be dark and, and, and damp if possible. So if, if it's in the place where there is good light, you're probably good as long as, again, as long as it's not direct sunlight. Some of you may be wondering, well, if it's okay to store your yarn out on the shelf where it can look beautiful, why do I use all these containers and doesn't that hurt them? Well, let's talk about that for a little bit. 
The main reason why I like to store my yarn in containers is that personally I am allergic to dust. And I do know that if I leave all of my yarn out, no matter what I do, dust comes about through the house. It comes in through the air vents and, you know, etc. So I do know that my yarn will get dusty and that'll cause me to have, you know, allergy issues. So I prefer to store my yarn in some plastic boxes. Okay, so now let's talk about what do we do to protect our yarn. There are many different solutions, but I'm going to talk about my two favorite. But before we do that, let's talk about what you shouldn't probably do. The most obvious thing that many people may have seen, heard, or seen their family members do is use moth balls, right? They're moth balls, so they should repel moths. Well, they do repel moths. However, they are also a pesticide. They can damage your plastic containers. They can actually melt through containers if you happen to use those. They can melt through your bags. They can damage and um, discolor your clothing. And in addition to that, depending on you know where you purchase these, they, they don't smell very good for one thing. And they're very strong. And if you put them in a small craft room, they can be a breathing hazard. They do give off toxic fumes and they are dangerous to pets in your home, especially if you have cats, they can harm your animals. So I would highly recommend that you not use mothballs. I mean, nobody wants to be wearing a sweater that's reeks of mothballs, right? I mean, I, I certainly don't. So let's talk about what really does work and what I'm gonna recommend today. Many different places, whether it's online or at your local hardware store or even department store, or maybe even craft store, they make these little um, red cedar balls and oh my gosh, they smell wonderful. And it's, it's a lovely smell. And, and to be honest with you, it, it's almost a nostalgic smell for me because it, it's just reminiscent of my mother's cedar chest where she stored all her precious things. And as a little girl, I just loved it when she would open it and get something out of there. It was just a very special memory for me. And it, it really is mm, a very pleasant smell. So there are two things you can do. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do right now. I have my box of yarn as I said before you know I could store this out open on my on my shelves for viewing but because of the dust I prefer to keep them covered now these these covers are not totally airtight I mean they are fairly tight but they're not they're not sealed totally airtight which is actually good because if it's airtight, then the fiber is not going to be able to breathe. And, and yeah, like I mentioned before about being able to absorb up to 30% of its weight and moisture from the air, you want to be careful about that. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and drop a few of these just right, right into the box. It, I'm not afraid of it, you know, becoming a problem. Now, if you are really a little squeamish about doing it that way, I do have a solution. If you don't want the cedar to directly touch your yarn, again, it's not going to hurt it, but if you're afraid of that, you can get these little little bags. I got these, a pack of like 10 or, or 20 from the Dollar Tree at my local store, or you can just, you know, make them out of fabric and then just drop these in the bag and then just put that in, you know, just drop that into your yarn box and, you know, maybe put a few of them into each box that you have and then just just close it up and you're good to go now there's one other thing you can also do if you are like me and you like to use this the small storage boxes even though i don't have moisture issues in my house right at the moment there's always the possibility that my air conditioning could break and so i've decided since i do use the closed storage system i'm going to use these little packets of silicone i got a, a whole package of these online for for less than six dollars it's it's very uh, very minimal investment so i'm going to go ahead and, and drop a couple of these into the boxes as well. And just to try to, you know, again, preserve my special yarns. Now you may want to wonder what happens when these lose their aromatic potency, which they will over time. What you can do is purchase some cedar oil 
online or again at your local um, hardware store and put some on a plate and then you can or in a bowl and just kind of roll these around in the oil and get them completely coated and then after that you must let them dry completely especially if you're just putting them in where they're in direct contact with your fibers make sure that you are make sure these dry 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 completely so that they don't leave any of the stain from the cedar oil okay. another interesting find that i found online are cedar rings and i know that they have these in the stores as well and these are really cool so as you can just put these on your hanger like this and then just hang it you know in your closet and just put these you know several of these throughout your closet and it will help to protect your clothes but this is especially good if you are storing your yarn where you also store your clothes so it's just kind of like it's making it do double duty for you and i also wanted to mention how this works this is not a pesticide but it is a scent that is used to cover up the scent of your natural fibers so it kind of like it kind of like puts the the insects off the scent they can't smell the natural fibers that they crave when this overpowers that scent so that is the whole purpose and, and which is why every so often every few months once this may lose its potency you're going to want to refresh it with some cedar oil you know any brand will probably work you know definitely check the the reviews to see which one you prefer but um definitely this is something that you're going to want to maintain not just do once and forget another natural solution should you not like the smell of red cedar is you can make little sachets with potpourri and especially using lavender and some lavender oil again making sure that it is dry before you put it with your items and then put it in little sachets and then just you know drop it in the boxes that you have should you you know store it in a similar fashion now if you don't use boxes like i do and you just like to have the yarn available on the shelves out in the open which is fine especially if you know if the dust doesn't bother you just put a couple of these a little cedar balls in the back of the bin and another very important thing that you're going to want to do is just like your food stock you want to rotate it you want to rotate your stock often you want to make sure that you're looking at it and not just leaving it sit for a couple of years on a shelf undisturbed that's where your problems can begin so just regularly you know go through rotate the stock you might become quite inspired to make something new by doing that or discover new new friends that you bought a long time ago and packed away before i go i want to talk about one main style of storage that i find very common among all of our crafters and that is using the ziploc bags of various sizes to store our yarn now this is totally airtight which can present a problem like we said before the fiber does need to breathe because we don't know where the fiber has been and if it has been out where it has absorbed moisture already it can have up to 30% of its weight in moisture and it, it not feel wet to the touch. So what I would recommend if you don't want to depart from using your Ziploc bags is get some of those silicone packets. You may even have some left over from a new shoe purchase and just put them in the bag just to make sure that it will not you know, be in there with trapped moisture. Now, as far as what do you do if you find you, you have an infestation? That is a really hard question to answer, and I'm not gonna deal with it thoroughly in this particular video, but there will be an article posted below that you can check out and it has more details about that. But I would just sum it up to say, getting rid of an infestation is very difficult, which is why I decided on that that new that that yarn that was given to me by friends i just decided to dispose of it also if you have yarn that is infested do not give it to somebody else and it is not a good thing to even like give it to the salvation army or to some other organization that is not a way to bless people i promise because it will affect their store and and their home so just do the right thing and i would say if it's if it's significant like the one i was expressing just get rid of the yarn now if it's something very precious a sweater or something like that check out the link below and see if there's some ways that you can you know save an item if it's not too far gone
But the main thing is you want to protect your stash. It's not worth getting a great deal at a yard sale if the yarn you know, is dry rotted, has mold and mildew, or um, has the possibility of an infestation of any of the pests that we've discussed so far. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's just the tip of the iceberg really on this subject, but it's a good thing to think about. I, I have learned a lot by delving into this. I want your questions. I would love to film a follow-up video to this, just specifically questions and answers as best I can, and it helps me to learn more when we do this. So if you have any questions or comments, please post them below and um, I, I will love to hear from you. I may not give you a full response down there in that section, but I would love to use your questions for a future video. God bless. Bye-bye.